Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the Black Powder Editor for Guns of the Old West Magazine. And today we're going to be shooting one of the classics of the Civil War. The Remington New Model Army Revolver. This is a replica made by Pieta in Italy and it's imported by Dixie Gunworks in Union City, Tennessee. This is the Remington New Model Army Revolver. And it's often called the 1858 Remington. And you'll, uh, you'll see it called that in a lot of the black powder catalogs and magazines and, and what have you. Though in point of fact, there is no such gun as the 1858 Remington revolver. Uh, this gun, gun picked up that name because it carries an 1858 patent date on it. And that patent was by Fortis Beals, uh, who designed the original Remington revolver. And basically, it, it covers uh, some ancillary things on the loading lever and, and that sort of thing. But it was a date, and that's, that's what the modern folk picked up on, I think, when they were looking for a name for this. If you were in the Civil War and you said, hey, hand me that 1858 Remington, everybody would have looked at you like you had two heads. They wouldn't have known what you were talking about. This, this particular gun was called the Remington New Model Army Revolver. And it was the, uh, the third in Remington's Army series. The first one was the Remington Beals revolver. And that came out in 1860. And it looked similar to this in the frame, though the loading lever didn't have this web on it at all. It just kind of was squared off down here. Uh, but other than that, it looked pretty similar. Now there are a couple of little things. You can see Remington New Model Armies the barrel threads have a cutout. I'll just show you. This is the way you remove a cylinder on a new model army. Put it on half cock, drop the loading lever a bit, kick out the center pin, and then just kind of give it a twist. Right? And you've got it out. So without the cylinder in, we can see a little bit better. You can see how the barrel threads are exposed. Well, on earlier models, this was squared all the way out here. And the supposition is that this was rebated a bit to help with the, the fouling issues that this gun has. And, and it does foul pretty badly. So, this was followed by the old model army in 1861 and 1862. And then in 1863, this final refinement came out, uh, which is, is known as the new model army. And you can see there are no caps on the nipples. Again, it's safe to handle. It is empty, being a cap and ball revolver. It's very easy to tell when these guns are safe. So what are distinguishing characteristics on here? Well, unlike its competitor, the Colt, and we'll just show you a Colt 1860 Army over here. Uh, as you can see, the frame on the 1860 Army does not extend over the top of the cylinder. It does not enclose a barrel. The barrel is a totally separate module that comes off on the Colts. And the grip assembly, the trigger guard and the back straps, are separate and they're held on uh, with six screws that tend to loosen up and have to be periodically retightened. So that's kind of the issue with this gun. Now a good thing about the new model army is it has a very wide arbor and it handles fouling very well. The Remington does not handle fouling very well. But it has some features that really endear it to modern shooters, but more so than to 19th century shooters, I might add, where this was considered a distant second best to, uh, to the Colt. But the Remington has a very modern style frame. It's got a top strap. The barrel screws into it, so the frame is solid. And the grip frame is not a separate piece, but it's integral to the frame, just like it is on modern grips. The trigger guard is separate. It's held by one screw, and uh, it, it stays together very well. But, like the Colt, it's a single action. You have to cock it to fire it. And it's cap and ball, so it loads from the front. We'll be telling you about that. Uh, one of the real knocks on this gun, compared to the Colt, is that it's more difficult to cap with a capper. And I'll just show you what we mean. All right, so we're on half cock. And we've got a pretty wide opening here. So 
I can take this capper, I can get it inside there, and I can easily get a cap on the cylinder. And that's much easier than capping it with your, uh, your naked little fingers and thumbs fumbling around with those caps. But on most Remingtons, I'll just show you on this cylinder off the gun, you can't get a capper in here. There's simply not enough room. And that's because of the 19th century, they really didn't use them. Right? So this was not considered a bad thing then. However, it is considered a bad thing now. Uh, because generally, if you're shooting one of these in a cowboy match, you're going to want to use a capper like this. Holds about 100 rounds, you can get through the match, and it's much easier than fumbling them on with your fingers at the loading table. So, in order to do that, what we've done is we've opened up these windows. This is an unmodified cylinder, and as you can see, we're very tight, and we just have a little slot here. Right? Now let's compare that with the modified cylinder, where as you can see, we're quite open and rounded all the way around. And you can do that with a the uh, quarter inch grinding drum on a Dremel tool. And that's all I did here. Now with the enlarged uh, cutouts for the nipples, it's not a problem to get a capper right on there and to cap them up. And that allows you to use the convenience of one of these Ted Cash snail type cappers uh, at a match. Right, here's a closer look at that modification. You can see on the left the original configuration for the, uh, for the nipples. Uh, and you can see on the left how that's been opened up by the sanding drum on the Dremel tool to give you that nice U-shape that you can get a capper in. Another feature of the Remington are these safety notches, which is quite different than Colt's design. On a Colt, uh, we'll see how well we can see them. Uh, yeah. Okay, right here, right there, is a tiny pin. And that pin on half cock fits into a notch on the hammer nose, which we'll show you. Let's get on this side. Okay, you can see that slot? Well, if I bring this around, just like this, I can rest that between those two, and that would allow me to carry this Colt with all six loaded and capped safely. And that's the way they did it in the 19th century. Remington used a somewhat different system to do exactly the same thing. You can see between each set of nipples there's a slot right there. And this does the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate that around and I'm gonna rest my hammer right between two chambers in that slot and that's a safety slot. And that allows you to carry a Remington with all six loaded and still be safe. And that's the way they did it in the 19th century. Now, I'm going to tell you, most replicas do not fit these slots with the hammer nose the way they should. And we'll do another video later on Remington modifications where we'll cover some of that stuff and how you, how you can make them fit better to make the gun safer. In cowboy action shooting, we're only allowed to load five anyway. But if you want to do it the way the old timers did, that's something you're going to want to do. So we'll take this out to the range, load it up, and show you how it behaves. Now, loading Remington's cap and ball revolvers is easily accomplished. If you're at all familiar with cap and balls, there's nothing really different about a Remington. I'm going to put it on half cock so the cylinder will turn. We're using this flask of 3FG, throws a 30 grain charge. Uh, we'll get a charge going. We will pour it in. Then we're going to seat a uh, felt wad, lubricated wad, over the powder. And then we're going to take a 454 diameter round ball 
and seat that, rotate it till it's under the rammer, and just send it home. And we're going to do that five more times and leave one chamber empty. So we've got all the chambers loaded on the Remington now, and now we need to cap it. So I'm going to take my Ted Cash capper and just slide it on, and we're going to do that five more times, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we've got five chambers loaded and capped, and what we're going to do now is rotate it around to the empty, cock it, lower the hammer on an empty one for safety, and we're good to go. The Remington's comfortable to shoot. It gives you just enough recoil to let you know you're shooting a big bore, but not enough to really push you around. If you're wondering about the black gloves, I had spent caps falling on my hand all day, and that burns. I decided I'd better get a glove on for filming. We'll finish up with the bad guy's view of the Remington New Model Army.